Hey everybody, we're gonna get started in just a moment. Uh, we're just gonna do a sound check here. We had a couple of tech hiccups in the webinar room. Um, so if you just want to maybe, uh, if you could message us, uh, Marie, do you wanna say something? Maybe they'll respond to your voice better. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's way better. Full screen that. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, awesome. So yeah, if you guys can hear us, uh, please let us know, and we'll get started in just one minute. We're gonna let a couple more people file in here. Thanks. All right, everybody, it looks like we've got a lot of people coming on in. We got about uh, ooh, half our signups. That is awesome. We're going to get started here. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Marie, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. How are you feeling, Henry? I was feeling pretty angry up until a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> Guys, you think such a large, astute, successful technology company like Ring Partner would never have any problems trying to get a monitor to get plugged in properly? Anyway. All problems aside, we are now ready to go, and we're thrilled that we have so many of you joining us here. The topic today is the top publisher FAQs answered. You asked, we're answering. Uh, Marie and I are both are, uh, work well on the supply side with distribution partners and publishers like yourself, and we have, I would say we've heard it all, but we get new questions all every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Would you guys stop being so creative and inquisitive? It's making our jobs really hard. Just kidding, of course. That's how we learn. Without further ado, let's get going. Uh, Marie, you know, I like this picture of me before, but now I don't. Marie, is my toque acceptable? It's fine. It looks mm, great. I don't know. Great. I don't know. If anyone honestly answers me how my toque looks, uh, I might give you a, uh, a five cent bump on your offer. Just <laughs> let me know. Uh, but no, the agenda today, guys, we are very excited. Uh, we've got a lot of good questions. We're going to answer them. Uh, we've got a live Q&A, and then we have a bonus special offer at the end, a little bit of enticement to keep you around because I know it can be hard hearing me prattle on. But don't worry, we've also got Marie here, who is our partner success manager. Yes. Uh, Marie, any, any initial thoughts? Yeah, so uh, as Henry just mentioned, I am a partner success manager. I answer a lot of your inbound phone calls, your questions, your concerns, your emails. And basically what we want to do is round up all of those questions or as many as we can and answer them here for you. So yeah, while we're going on through the slides, definitely let us know if you have any questions in the chat box over there and we'll try to get to them. All righty, here we go. Hey, Marie. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. When and how will I get paid? That is a great question, Henry. So yeah, that's the main thing. We want you to get paid. You're sending us leads. You're sending us calls. Yes, we, want we do. You to get paid. So the first thing you have to do is enter your billing details and the account settings on your dashboard. So that's the how factor. Uh, depending on where you're located and the bank you choose, that's what kind of payment options you'll have. The when is from the get-go, monthly net 15, once you surpass the $100 threshold. So if you earn over $100 this month, you get paid next month on the 15th. That's kind of how it works. Guys, do not screw up your billing settings. <laughs> if don't. you manage to enter the wrong banking information or the wrong check or the wrong carrier pigeon or the wrong address, we cannot resend your payment until one month later. And no, not even if you ask nicely. No. Our accounting team is mean. It's full of devilish, angry people who have no regard for any kind of uh, personal satisfaction outside their own and their big book of numbers. So I guess it's spreadsheets of numbers. Yes. So we literally can't. We can't do it. Doesn't if you matter if you earn $101 or $101,000 in a month. Yep. If we don't give us the billing details correctly, 
We cannot send it to you. I checked and it's not in the budget for Marie and I to fly out to you and bring you the money in big bags of money like in this icon here, although that would be kind of cool. We might be susceptible to robbery. So yeah, guys, don't screw this up. It's dead easy. Go on the dashboard, account settings in the top right-hand corner. Tell us how you want us to... Tell us how you want money from us. Yep. Double check with your bank if you're concerned about anything. If you have any questions about anything, double check with your bank. Make sure those payment details are put in properly. And then, yeah, you'll get paid monthly net 15. And there's more. If you start earning a lot of money, let's yep. say thousands a week and you are killing it, we might be able to move you to more frequent payments, semi-monthly, which means you get your check every two weeks. And then the ultimate pinnacle of payment is the mythical, mystical mysterious weekly payments, uh, which means you'll get a check every week reserved only for the top publishers, which could be any one of you. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Perfect. Next. So Henry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why didn't this call count? That's a good question. And sometimes we don't even know the answer. Most of the time we do, but a lot of times it just is a combination of factors. So right off the bat, connect duration is probably the easiest answer. Uh, every campaign is going to have one. Almost every campaign is going to have one. You got to remember the connect duration is once the caller has exited the IVR. So don't count IVR length in your connect duration. Make sure that that's long enough. Uh, additionally, there's a couple other reasons. Uh, repeat callers don't count every 30 days. And I had a good question from a publisher today who just started running an offer yep. and they had a repeat call and they said, how is that possible? Well, it's a repeat call per campaign, not just per publisher. So unfortunately what happened is that if it's the same offer, but somebody had seen, you know, someone else's promo number and dial it up, invoke accounts that caller ID as a repeat caller. It doesn't matter if the second or third or fourth or fifth or 500th time they call in, they spend a million dollars and spend two hours on the phone. We're not going to get paid. Therefore we can't pass that payment on to you. Yeah, exactly. Marie, any other reasons why a call wouldn't count? Yeah, definitely. So always double check the campaign summary just to make sure what the qualifications are for a call to go to become considered converted or paid. Um, so is it within region? Is it within the correct hours? Um, did they press the necessary key press they have to? So always double check that in the campaign summary. And if you still are scratching your head wondering what's going on there, just email the partner success team the call record ID and we can look into it for you and see what's going on. Yeah, there's always going to be the, the sort of the elusive of, uh, you know, uh, unicorn out there where like a call really legitimately should have counted. In which case, if that's the case, you know, add ops will fix it and we'll add that credit onto your next payment. So you got it. we're not, again, we don't make money unless you make money. We would like you to make money because then we make money. We make money. Yeah. And then we're all happy. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Moving on to question numero trois. Yes. Hey, Marie. Why? Hey, yeah, hello. Hey, Marie. Hello, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Why are the campaign summaries so vague? This is a great question. This is a great question. And when we get it, I completely understand since we come into this office every single day, you know, Monday to Friday, we can definitely get a little bit single-minded, narrow-viewed and be like, what do you mean the campaign summary is vague? So no, it's a great question. And yeah, the campaign summaries are so vague because the majority of our campaigns do not have one single buyer. They have multiple buyers. So if they have multiple buyers, unfortunately, there isn't just one landing page we can refer to you, or there isn't kind of one set of criteria or qualifiers of what counts as a good quality call. So we like to keep it generic. We like to keep it vague. So that way it can apply to all of our buyers. So whether your call goes to Joe's plumber or Brad's plumber, that caller can still get help and still get service. And look, guys, we guys and girls, <laughs> everyone. everyone, everyone, we get it. The more vague the campaign description is, the harder it is for you. And, and to be honest, I totally agree. I wish that we got you know, encyclopedias worth of information from buyers about which specific calls they want and which ones they don't so that you can target accordingly. We don't have that information. We often won't just because we have no idea where the calls are going to go sometimes on any given call. They just get routed based on relevancy and key press and zip coverage. And you typically won't hear that your quality sucks until we basically ask you to stop running the offer. The good news is that that really doesn't happen very often. Most of the hooks and the angles that publishers come up with yield good results. And we'll get into that a little bit later on about rate increases or, you know, reducing the campaign duration summer or the connect duration. But a lot of times, like 
I, I look at it as an opportunity. If a campaign description is vague, then that means you have more and more angles to go after. Yeah. As long as you're not mentioning any specific brand or company, that's a big no-no on a lot of offers. You're pretty much, you have free reign to, to make almost any, you know, promise you wish. Again, as long as you're not really promising anything outlandish that the buyer can't deliver on, but in which case yeah. we wouldn't approve you anyway. No. So a lot of freedom there in a way. Yeah, exactly. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm a little biased for this one. Do you mind if I take this one? Well, I, I sure don't can mind I just, at all. Can I take <clears> this one? Henry, hey, lob it my way. All right, here we go. Lob, lob, softball coming in. Hey, Marie. Hello. Can you expedite the campaign approval process? Now, did I ask that correctly? Should I should I emphasize a different word? Let's try it again, guys. <clears throat> hey, Marie. Hello. Can you <laughs> expedite the campaign approval process? Yes. So uh, with creative approval specifically, so submitting your creatives to get approved on a campaign. Um, yeah, it should only take one business day unless the campaign says otherwise. There are some campaigns that also require the buyer's approval as well, but there will be a disclaimer in the campaign summary to let you know that. So any campaign that doesn't mention additional buyer's approval required should only take one business day to get approved. And if you want it even faster, email me marie at ringpartner.com or distribution at ringpartner.com. And I can definitely just expedite that process for you. Give us a call as that says as well, email or call, let us know. A lot of questions we get are how long does it take? And you know, how do I get approved? And the answer is not very long, as long as everything is submitted correctly. Right. Just make sure you've actually submitted your creatives before you call in and say, I'd like to be approved on the offer. Cause you guys know the deal by now, because of course, when you logged in for the first time, you watched uh, with great anticipation, the welcome video, I think produced by myself, but I don't know. I, is might, that, was that you? Yeah, no, that might be. It should be Marie. You're right, guys. We should redo that video with Marie. I get it. No, but that's it's very simple, guys. We approve creatives all the time. We're not in the business to deny creatives. We want to approve you. We understand the process can be cumbersome. We want to make sure it's as uncumbersome as possible. I'm sure that's not a word. But yeah, Squeaky Will gets the grease, guys. Anytime one of my guys or girls wants to get approved, they just call me up and I'll make sure to bug Marie. Or if Marie is out even a pinch, I might be able to do it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Perfect. Next All right. question. Good one, Marie. Henry, why didn't I? Yes. Get... Okay. Hello, Henry. Hello. Why didn't I get approved for a campaign? Because we don't like you. That's not true. Um, there's a couple of reasons why you didn't get approved. Uh, some of the stuff we already mentioned. Uh, number one is you didn't apply. So a lot of pubs uh, that I work with ask me to invite them to campaigns. That doesn't really exist. We, I can't really send out an invitation. We have about 120 offers live right now. Yeah, something like that. All you got to, and almost, I think 99% of them are not private. They're public. So all you have to do is go into Invoca, submit your application there, just basically a blurb saying how you're going to run it, and then submit your creatives in the dashboard. And that's outside Invoca. That's it. We don't need to send invites or anything like that. If you do that process and your creatives aren't promising anything crazy, then we're going to get you going. Um, Maria, I'm going to let you speak to the second point because you look at creatives all day. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, right. Inaccurate creative. So with that, um, I have actually had it where people will, for example, apply to an HVAC campaign and then we'll actually submit a plumber creative. It can happen. It's a little mistake, but sometimes it's not that clear where it's just, Oh, you, you applied to the wrong campaign. You submitted the wrong creative. So other times it can be an inaccurate creative in that are the hours completely off. You know, that actually is going to, hurt your conversion rate. You want to make sure that yeah. callers can actually call in at the appropriate time because that's when your calls actually convert with that. Um, otherwise, yeah, inaccurate gets a little bit more into, for example, um, yeah, are you making promises that the buyer can't deliver? In which case we can't have that. We want to make sure again that any caller that calls through, they can be serviced. So if they have these expectations that we can't actually deliver on like, call now and a plumber will be there in five minutes or call now and get the 20% off deal. Then unfortunately that won't get approved. But again, as Henry said, we're not in the business of denying. We want to reach out to you first, let you know, Hey, can you please change this? And then we're good to go get your phone numbers and then we're good to go. Empathy mode. Empathy. I know, I know how difficult this industry is guys. I've been in it for nearly 10 years and I've spent about half that speaking with publishers like yourself. And I can't even imagine the amount of work you've all put in, even just starting out. And so it can be very demoralizing when you spend a lot of time on a creative with the hopes of money rolling in and then you know stupid fatty pants henry is saying sorry that we can't have that you know creative 
If we ask for any kind of change, it's only to make sure that you're going to be successful on the offer. Yeah. What we don't want is having to suspend you on the offer because of an unapproved creative. And honestly, most of the time, anyone, anytime someone submits a creative that's quote unquote inaccurate or won't get approved, honestly, all it usually takes is like deleting one word. Yeah. Like we're not going to get you know up on you about your color scheme or no. your image selection. I will recommend though, uh, two people looking at another person with a clipboard laughing that that works for almost any industry. Um, we're not going to get up to you about that. We're not going to get up in your grill. We're not going to say like, nah, I would move the text over here. It's, honestly, as long as it doesn't promise anything crazy, we're going to approve it. Yep. That's exactly. basically it. So don't, don't be discouraged. Um, you know, with our help, we're going to get you approved. We approve, you know, something like, I don't know, probably 50 creatives a day easily. Yeah, yeah. And we only reject usually, you know, a couple. And again, it's usually just because we might be like, ah, we need you to remove this word or something like that. That's it. And then, yeah, high sensitivity campaigns. So that's another big one. So you may have seen some of our tort offers or some of our drug rehab offers. Anything that's higher sensitivity, we just want to make sure that you've driven traffic with us before, before you apply, or that you have experience in those categories. So yeah, call us if you're like, hey, I this is my first campaign I'm applying to with you guys, but I want to get approved. Here's my experience with drug rehab, for example, or running tort. And then, yeah, we're happy to consider it. Very cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, Henry, I'm going to lob this your way. <laughs> Henry. Incoming home run. Uh, yes, Marie. What does good quality mean? Oh, man. What does it mean? Okay. There's no real correct answer to this. But essentially, what we're talking about here that relates to you is, in the end, is the buyer happy versus is the buyer not happy? Good quality means that you are sending through calls from customers that align with the buyer's request, right? So. I know you guys might look at your stats and you might think, hey, I'm doing great. And it might be the complete opposite, right? Your stats might look good. The conversion rate looks good. But if you're sending over people that, you know, immediately hang up, you know, after the connect duration or don't end up spending any money on the business or what have you, that's going to be considered bad quality. It is not a knock on you personally. No. Every single publisher, good and bad, have sent a mix of good and bad calls. In fact, I usually expect publishers starting out either, you know, with Ring Partner or on an individual campaign. Initially, there are probably going to be bad calls because it's a feeling out process. This is not easy. It takes time, data, resources to figure out what works best. So typically what that means, guys, is good quality means the buyers are happy, we're happy, and you're happy. That's great. All across the board, that's what we're trying to get. Bad calls usually indicates that, you know, the callers might be being misled or confused by one of the creatives. Could mean, you know, could mean our IVR needs work. Could be that the buyer wasn't clear enough on what kind of calls they want. There's about six or seven different answers as to why a call is good and why a call is bad or what calls count as good and what call counts as bad. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Marie, the connect duration is too long. Can it be changed? No. Yes, yes, it can. <laughs> yes, it can. So yeah, when you go to a campaign summary, you'll see all the qualifications, as I mentioned before, of what counts as a paid call. And so for some of our campaigns, it's a 30 second duration. Some are raw, some are 60, 90, 120. They all kind of vary, but they're definitely up for negotiation. So if, for example, we increase the duration, the rate goes up. If we decrease the duration, the rate goes down, as that nifty little chart shows us right here. Well, I certainly didn't make those wonderful <laughs> looking arrows, but I wish I had. Indeed. Um, but no, always up for negotiation. If you're ever interested in, I could really do this campaign so much better if you know the duration was lowered, then yeah, we're happy to negotiate or talk to you about that and see kind of what kind of volume you're expecting. Um, but Henry, I think you've been asked this question more often. Yeah. So especially by our organic pubs, because I know AdWords and, and paid search guys, you know, rate is, you know, it's, you got to cover your costs. I get that. Yeah. But for those that are more interested, you know, maybe they have organic traffic that doesn't cost very much. Try out a raw call test. Just give us a shout and say, what rate can you do? Um, we've had very, very good results. Again, the payouts might be like, you know, at first laughable. You're like, there's no way I can make that work. But when you start seeing conversion rates, you know, 60, 70, 80, 85%, because the call duration is only five seconds, you might be changing your tune. <laughs> your pleasure may increase and your anger may decrease. Hopefully not the other way around. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Hey, Marie. Hello. What should I, wait, did I ask you the last question? I don't know. I, I'll take it. This is good. Hey, Marie. <laughs> oh. What should I do if my promotional method is 
restricted. Yeah. So again, I keep mentioning that uh, campaign summary. So the campaign summary will let you know which promotion promotional methods are allowed, but actually the default method is to show you which ones are restricted right off the bat. Right. So the first thing to check is to go to next to promotional methods and click show all. So that way you see all the promotional methods that are allowed as well. So restricted promotional methods, say for instance, offline, you have a great newspaper that you want to promote with, or say you have any different kind of all different kinds of promotional methods let us know get in touch with us let us give us all the details you want in terms of okay i have this newspaper i'm really interested in this campaign do you think we could make it work and yeah we're happy to talk to the advertisers as well to see if it can work or what we would need to do as the next action items for it this industry is built on the gray area guys living living on the edge right if you're not living on the edge you're taking up too much space i've i've heard it all I have no idea if you come to me and say, Henry, I've got something really outside the box. I don't know if it's going to work. And my answer would be, I don't know if it's going to work either, but we might be able to test it out. And worse comes to worse. Okay. We try it for a couple of days. You know, maybe someone loses money here or there a little bit, but it's worth that risk because if it really works and you're early to the party with, you know, a formally restricted promotion method, but maybe now we've opened it up or maybe it's a variation that's way more compliant and you're first to the party, you're going to be making a lot of money. We've yeah. got a lot of projects in the go in terms of tackling these kinds of outside the box promotional methods. Yeah. So definitely keep that in mind, but make sure you talk to us first and certainly don't say you're going to do one thing and then experiment with another that'll that's cause different. problems that'll be uh, a challenge down the road yeah, let's say yeah okay henry yes can i get a list of zip codes that are covered yes you absolutely can so coverage is a tricky one and this will pertain mostly to our home services category so some offers like legal or insurance don't really care where you are um most of the time you know we're able to field calls to almost anywhere but even for those you're going to see a lot of campaigns and again particularly home services like plumbing locksmith um, towing things like that are going to ask for a zip code and the reason for that is we don't have a hundred percent of every square inch of the country covered Mm -hmm. someone may call in and they might be outside our coverage. And what does our coverage mean? It's basically a radius that our buyers are willing to accept calls on. What makes it tricky is no, we don't have a giant list of every zip code that will work and every zip code that won't work. What we do have is based on previous months or years data is a list of zip codes that have worked in the past. Yes. So if you're ever running a home services offer, just request that from us. It takes us uh, five or 10 minutes to kind of generate that, but we'd be happy to do it to kind of give you a really good idea as to what areas will and won't be successful. Yeah, so we don't have, as Henry said, a zip list of all the areas, every single zip code that is covered. But as Henry said, it's, we do have those zip lists where, yep, yeah, these have recently received conversions, happily send them your way to help with targeting. So yeah, by all means request that. Hey, Marie. Hi, Henry. Hello. <laughs> when can I ask for a pay bump? So that's a great question. Just like the rate, uh, just like the duration increases or decreases, absolutely rate we can talk about as well. So there's no hard and fast yes or no time limit of when you can ask for a rate increase. But yeah, definitely reach out to us. We want to see that you've run the campaign before you're currently running it. What kind of volume are you generating? We want to know what kind of rate increase you do want and then what kind of traffic you think you'll be able to get with that rate increase as well. Everything is very flexible, guys. Don't ever be bashful or you know scared yes. to ask for a rate increase. We want to make sure that the campaign is successful for you. It's almost always based on volume and quality. If your volume yep. and quality are there, we can increase your rate. Heck, even if you haven't sent that much volume, but your quality looks really, really good, you know we can make sure that we ask the buyer. Maybe we can get a rate increase for everybody involved. But every rate is flexible. It's based on the market, really. It's what we can afford at the time. It's what we think is competitive for you. If it's not competitive for you, please let us know and we'll do our best. Can't guarantee that we'll give it to you, but we can guarantee that we'll check. At least ask, for sure. Henry. Yes. Which campaign should I run? All of them. No, just kidding. <laughs> Don't run all of them. This is one of my favorite questions because we really get to the heart of the matter of what an individual publisher can do. I kind of asked them, what offer do you think you should run? 
any kind of previous experience that you have in really any kind of industry, you should lean towards that offer. You're going to have a unique amount of insight into what customers want. And that's really what you're doing is trying to predict what kind of queries callers are going to be typing into their search engine or on YouTube or whatever in an effort to see your number over others. Don't ever be hesitant to ask like your friends or your family if they work in the legal space or maybe your brother-in-law is a roofer or your sister is a lawyer or your girlfriend works in lawn care or whatever. Ask them like what your customers like, what do they not like, you know, misconceptions, things like that really are a competitive advantage for you over other publishers. Another thing to keep in mind and with paper call, this is one of the easiest concepts to tap into seasonality. Yeah. We're all, I mean, callers are just like you guys. They're calling in about what? Okay, well, right now here in Victoria, it's March, which means still pretty crappy weather, which means people are staying at home and being cold. Okay, well, then there's heating. People might have heating broken or they might be too cold. They want extra heating, what have you. So heating is an issue. Water, there's tons of rain and even a lot of snow around this time which sucks, but is an opportunity for online marketers like everybody here. So basement waterproofing, flood and fire damage, things like that. People are, again, the more they're inside, think about the kinds of issues that arise from being cooped up. Maybe they want to go traveling. So you got to look at travel offers. Um, you know, with the spring season coming up, maybe they're going to start thinking about lawn care because they want their lawn to look really good for the summer. Yep. It's one of the easiest things to do. And don't ever forget about Google Trends. One of the best tools available, way better than me. Oh, yeah. Marie, do you have any any ideas as no, to what campaigns they should run? That's absolutely right, yeah. especially with seasonality. It doesn't even necessarily have to be what's going on right now. You can definitely think ahead in terms of like, okay, Mother's Day is around the corner, so flower delivery. So you can think of right now, think of yourself as a consumer, and then, yeah, definitely think forward too, especially if you have to build out these websites or if you have to start preparing for these campaigns and submitting creatives. Give yourself some time to do that as well so you can get up and running when it's happening, when calls are coming in. Oh, well, now it's the Q&A part. So as we mentioned earlier, yeah, if you have any questions at all that we haven't covered, anything that you're wondering about, please enter it now. We'll definitely give you a couple minutes for that. But yeah. A lot of, ahead. yeah, I wanted to mention a lot of our publishers say like, you know, what what's different about Paper Call? Like what offer do I run on Paper Call? Fundamentally, guys, it's, it, and girls, it's everyone. <laughs> it's not that different from CPA or CPS. And almost everybody that has been accepted to Ring Partner has some kind of experience in that. Mm -hmm. So don't, you know, it's not necessarily rocket science here, guys. You're really, the fundamentals are very similar. Just instead of an email field or a zip field or a credit card, you're just trying to get people to call in. And I know every single person here has called into a business with a good experience and a bad experience and use those experiences to mold your marketing. Like what worked, what didn't always do a test call on our offers. And if you think the IVR stinks, we want to know yeah. uh, there might be, there's usually a very specific reason why we have the IVR in there. And sometimes, you know, the buyers, they want longer IVRs, publishers want shorter IVRs. We get it, but there's going to be some happy medium we can find yeah. again. Not all that dissimilar from, you know, those zip submits I used to work on at Neverblue years and years and years ago, guys. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's probably my my greatest tip for you is to don't treat it too differently from your previous experiences. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't look like we're actually getting any questions coming in. but Which it, which means we covered everything perfectly. Everything. Yes. I never have to do a <laughs> webinar again. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, no. Um, so yeah, if any questions do come to mind after this webinar, um, as kind of another theme of this webinar was, reach out, let us know, contact us. So yeah, give us an email, give us a call. You should have um, your account manager's details on your dashboard. Um, but yeah, any questions at all, just let us know. But now we can talk about our special offer. What? Special so, oh, offer? Wait, there's more. But wait. There's a special Bing offer for new users. Uh, you can get a hundred dollars if you go to this URL. Guys, if you're not on Bing, take advantage of this. This is a hundred dollars of free money. This free is money. house money. You can't even this. You know how excited I would be if I walked into Binion's on the old strip in Vegas and they just gave me a hundred dollars of house money. You think I'd take it and run? Hell no! I'd be at the tables playing with that right away. And that's what you're gonna do here. Make sure you use it to test out your keywords find out some information. This is free data that a lot of people would pay a lot more for. So on us, $100 for Bing ads, completely free. Have a go. So Henry, we actually have a question. If I can lob it your way. Yes, you can. So what are your thoughts on call only versus click to landing page campaign? Okay. Really good question. So guys, click to call 
uh, offers are, you know, when someone is on their mobile device and they search for something and, you know, you just click the call number next to a business number or a business name, you don't even go to a landing page. It's awesome. I've used it all the time. Publishers use it all the time. It's expensive at first, but the quality score is so high that it's going to drop your cost. Um, it's amazing. It's really, really good for offers that require a large sense of urgency. So things like towing, things like locksmithy, plumbing, electricians, maybe pest control, maybe roofing. Think about yourself. What issue would you would cause you to reach for your phone and call the first number you see? A lot of services then, you know, likewise, or counterintuitively with, uh, with landing page campaigns, is people generally look at landing pages, look at multiple landing pages, and it's going to be for services that they might do a little bit more research on. So maybe things like lawn care, maybe things like student loan, maybe things like tree service. A couple tree, I mean, there's a couple where they overlap in terms of urgency, but my golden rule is if somebody needs something taken care of within the hour, call only. If it can take longer than that, yeah, maybe landing page would do best. But that being said, I've seen you know cross success with both. Um, but those are my uh, those are my thoughts there. And a quick reminder: if you want to apply with a call only creative, we still need to see a landing page, yes. even though users aren't going to end up on it. Google does require it. And what is going on here? Okay, <laughs> okay, just ignore that, guys. Ignore the man behind the curtain. Um, we still require that landing page. It doesn't have to be an award winning site, obviously, since callers aren't going to end up on it. But we still need to see it. Yeah. And we actually have two questions from Taja. So Taja, thank you for joining this webinar. Um, the first one we had was, can you recommend any ad networks besides Google and Bing? And then I'm gonna awkwardly come around to see the other question here, tips to get Bing calls to convert. Okay, so I'm just gonna post the link uh, in the chat there, guys. Uh, those are very good questions. So Google and Bing obviously is where the most traffic is. Google obviously way more than Bing, but you know what, Bing's climbing up and it it's is. not as expensive. So for those that are intimidated by AdWords cost, check out Bing. Um, I talked to our internal team and they said, you know, Gemini is another ad network that some people use. Low, low volume there, obviously. But if you guys, you know, maybe you don't want to, you know, you don't have the resources or the energy or the time or the know-how to make thousands of dollars a month. Maybe you just want to generate a hundred bucks a month. You might be able to do that on Gemini. So check that out. And then tips for getting Bing calls to convert. I mean, to me, it's not all that different from getting any call to convert. And my favorite phrase that I've sort of coined is you want to prime your callers. You want them to be very well prepared for when they call in. Confusion is usually the worst enemy we have. I would say if you just count all the calls that make it through the IVR, conversion rates skyrocket to about 60 or 70%. It's getting them through the IVR, which means you have to prepare them that yes, they might have to enter their zip code. Yes, they're going to have to enter a key press. And I know, you know, it'd be way better if they didn't have to, but guys, we got to pre-qualify them before we send them to the buyer. My real philosophy is that the more you prime the callers, the better your conversion rate's going to be. Make sure you educate them before they call in so that they're prepared and don't freak out when they hear something maybe they weren't expecting on the phone. Perfect. Yeah. And then the other one was actually just following up on what we just answered regarding Gemini. So just asking to spell Gemini. Ah, yes, I can. There we go. And it is, uh, there we go. Henry. <laughs> oh, wait, that's not how you, you that's it. not how you spell it. Okay. I think it's just like that guys. I haven't used it myself. <laughs> um, so that looks like it's about it, unless anybody has any other questions. Uh, we had a really tremendous amount of, uh, of new publishers in the last month. I think we had something like 600, 700 signups or something like that. Um, and a lot of them have taken their time uh, to, you know, come to these webinars, call us in, you know, share with us their strategy. And it's really inspiring, guys. Thank you so much for doing that. We wouldn't exist. Marie and I would not nope. be employed. Nope. Uh, Marie and I never would have met unless uh, <laughs> this company existed. So we have you to thank for that, um, for all your hard work. And again, can't stress you know, enough what Marie said. Give us a call. Give us an email. We're here to help. Might not have all the answers right away, but we're going to get them to you. We're going to try for yeah. sure. Any well, other any other final thoughts, Marie? No, I think you said it all. Hard to top there, but yeah, thank you so much. Oh, sorry, I talked too much. Now. No, I am. Special. No, I know. Oh. Um, everybody, thanks so much again for joining, and we'll talk to you soon. Take, Take care. care.